my screen and open this up. All righty, so just on tonight's agenda, um, and if you don't know me, my name is Brian Phillips, the athletics director here at Pembroke. Um, if, if you did not participate in fall sports, you probably have not seen my face yet. Um, so I started in the, in the fall time in September, and it, things have gone great. So excited to continue this. This is the agenda for tonight, about 10, 10 slides I want to cover, mainly about updates, one on the Patriot League, the registration process, um, some of the, the high school policies, as well as the MIA rules, COVID policies, and then at the end, uh, I will leave some time. If there are any questions, I will try to answer those the best that I can. And, and the goal tonight is really to make sure that you guys leave here with answers. So if anything does come up, please feel free to ask that at the end of the session. This slide here, and for those of you who've been here in the fall, this, this is a slide that is going to always start every, every any presentation that I do uh, for Pembroke. It's that important to us. And this really encapsulates our mission statement, what we're about, and that's to educate and empower through athletics. It's always about academics. That, that's the platform of high school. And you can see the first piece of that is academics will always be the top priority. It's the main reason why it's a student athlete and not the other way around. The second piece of our mission statement is around the essential life skills that I strongly believe athletics provides. And the first one of that is sportsmanship. And that's what Pembroke's about. That's the way we play. That's how we expect to play. And it's a privilege. There's a reason there's a sportsmanship award because there's a lot of value to having that skill. The next piece is commitment, and that's the ability to commit to a team. It's bigger than yourself. You commit to, to, to many people. You commit to a shared goal and a shared vision. So the commitment piece is, is a life skill that I, I strongly believe athletics offers. Uh, moving forward is accountability. Every decision and action you make is an accountability piece, uh, and it's on you to make sure that you're creating the habits and the decisions and actions to align with the things that you want. And then lastly, this ties them all together. It's integrity. It's being who you say you are. That's the hardest thing to do. But sports has a platform to empower and to grow and develop all these skills from sportsmanship, commitment, accountability, integrity. And I, I believe that that can be done at a high level through high school athletics. Moving forward, uh, the first update is from the Patriot League. If you're not familiar with, with uh, Pembroke High School, if you're a freshman or, or you're new, Patriot League is, is, the, is the conference that we compete in. It's split through a, a Fisher and a Keenan side. So this is strictly speaking about our league, the Patriot League. Winter sports will start Monday, December 14th, um, and they will also end February 21st. So it's a condensed winter season, around nine weeks. Um, we're looking at about 75% of the normal games of what we normally have in the winter season. So it's condensed and shortened, um, as you can see, through that time frame. Basketball, ice hockey, gymnastics, and swimming are the four uh, major sports that I'm talking to tonight because those are the ones that have been improved from the MIAA that can participate in the wintertime. Wrestling, indoor track, and cheerleading have been pushed to our fall too, which will take place late February and or the springtime, which is a change from normal times. Scrimmages and games will take place in a bubble, Patriot League only opponents, so no out of league games will be permitted. And this is strictly for us, our student health and well being. It, it comes down to the ability to, to try to minimize variables, not open this up to anyone. Uh, we know what our league policies are. So we're hoping that every team's abiding by these and staying within this bubble hopefully provides us the best opportunity to stay COVID free and to stay as healthy and safety as we can through these times. And the conclusion of the winter season will be uh, completed with a Patriot Cup to replace a tournament or, or different um, type of things that used to take on in the wintertime. For the fall sports that competed, we ran the Patriot Cup for the first time, and I, I think we had tremendous um, value and success doing that. I truly believe the athletes enjoyed it, the coaches enjoyed it, the community enjoyed it. So that's something we will continue with our winter period. Next piece is all about registration. Uh, and, and the only way that you can participate in our sports is through registration. So please make sure that you follow these steps, understand the deadlines and, and what it will take to get this done. Uh, the first piece of it is to register online on the athletics website. It's simply pembrokek12.org. Um, <clears throat> if you go on that website, click the athletics tab, and you have about seven days from today, um, December 10th, to get that, that registration in. It, it's pretty simple. You just follow uh, the questions that, that ask you to, to get done, and, and you can submit it right online. After the registration, uh, physicals will have to uh, accompany that. You have 13 months from the date of the exam. So from your last physical, you may, it must be 13, less than 13 months to be valid. And if that 13-month time frame ends within the winter season, 
Um, you'll have to get a, a new physical before that season ends. Um, some ways I know the, the COVID piece is adding um, some factors that are delaying doctor's visits. We've had success with going to some of the minute clinics um, and, and the sa getting same day results going in minute clinic, getting a physical um, and the same day walking out of there with, with what you need to participate. And a slight change is that you can now email these. Uh, you can email these right directly to us. Where previously these had to be uh, faxed or brought in person. So if you don't have the ability to fax it or you don't want to uh, drop it off in person, you can simply just email these over to us and we can uh, we can dock you off from there. After the physical is our athletic user fee. Girls and boys uh, ice hockey is the kicker here where it's 275, which is a one time per year per user. It's fifty dollars higher than the other uh, winter sports going on. So please understand that the fifty dollar difference there of 275 or 225. And this will be due at a later time, 1218. <clears throat> this, will, this will allow us to get through the first week of practice and tryouts. So if a, a student athlete decides they don't want to participate in that sport or, or if there's a slight change, we will not deposit any checks till after that time frame. So please um, understand the deadline and get it in by 1218 for us. If you are going to write a check, you can see on the bottom there, just make it payable to Pembroke Public Schools and provide the uh, company information so we know who that check came from. The last piece of the registration is the impact testing. All freshmen and juniors are required to take this in the winter sports that are required to, to impact test are ice hockey, basketball, and gymnastics. So any freshman, any junior, please make sure you, you get that done. You can simply complete it online now. You can see the website there, impacttestonline.com. Our password, those are all capitals. And those are all zeros, not the letter. Those are number zeros. Uh, all capitals, and please complete that with your registration by December 10th. <clears throat> Moving forward here, this is about some uh, practice game schedules. Uh, like I said, these will uh, start on Monday the 14th, and the first regular season game, which we have the schedule is about 99% finalized for all sports. We can add some, some last touches to them uh, due to some, some logistics and facility pieces. But basketball right now is scheduled to start on 12.30 for both girls and boys. And then hockey will start right after the new year on the 2nd. And the swim and gymnastics are the two sports that we're kind of ironing out some facilities piece with. But right now we have that scheduled for that week of January 4th. So we're not too far away, um, you know, less than a month for all these sports really uh, to kick off their regular season. And obviously with the holiday time and, you know, in, in between there, it's going to come really quickly. So please make sure that, that those registration pieces are passed in and handed in on time so you can participate for the first day of practice and tryouts and then continue on your games. Schedules, we'll continue to update these as they change. Um, once again, going referring back to our athletics website and or going to the miaa.net website. There's a ton of information if you're not familiar with that website, uh, I would strongly recommend to jump on there and just, just to navigate through and you can, you can find yourself a lot of high school information. Now let's, let's pivot a little bit into some of the uh, uh, policies for Pembroke High School. Uh, the first piece here is school attendance. It's very simply put, if you're absent from school, you may not participate in any athletic event on that day unless you're granted um, or, or permitted by administration. Students must be present by the start of the second block and must remain in school for the day in order to participate in any athletic event, once again, unless exception is granted from administration. And this also applies to our remote days. So on those Mondays, uh, certainly it, it, it's new. It's not part of the norm in, in, in the, the school year calendar. So that Monday or remote day can be tricky uh, for, for some student athletes, but please you have to make sure that you have your daily check-ins, that you complete those Whatever you're supposed to do for that day, fully complete that to be, to be granted your full attendance for that school day. The next part of the attendance is, is your sport. And this is very similar to the school. Prompt attendance is mandatory for all practice meetings and games that are scheduled from tryouts to the end of your season. It goes back to, to one of those life skills of commitment. Once you commit to your team, you are required and expected to be at attendance for anything that is involved with your team. Continuing on here, transportation, which is also slightly different than it would normally would be. Uh, for those who don't know, um, we will always provide transportation to any away contest. All right. And, and, and this is what the slight change here is that parents, caregivers have the option 
of providing transportation to these away contests if they would like. They just need to fill out a waiver that is signed by both the parent care caregiver and also myself. We are offering this to help ease some of the, the bus issues. You know, we're limited with capacity of having 23 people on our 77 passenger bus this year. So that, that causes problems. Hopefully by allowing the parents caregivers to take on the option of, of providing transportation can alleviate some of those issues. That's simply why we have that put in place currently for the, the winter sports season. Communication, and this is strictly between parents and our sport coaches. Um, there, there's always something that comes up here. And I just wanna make sure that these are very clear from everyone that, that's in this meeting. So the appropriate issues to, to talk with the sport coach about, um, concern about your son or daughter, that can be about academic standing. That can be if you have some mental health concerns, if you have some behavior concerns about your son and daughter, those are completely appropriate issues to talk to the sport coach about. Conversely, the inappropriate issues are about play calling. If you're not happy with, with uh, the playing time that, that, that is occurring, um, if you're not happy with the play calling, the, the strategy, um, other student athletes that are in the program, those are issues that should not be confronted with or spoken about with a sport coach. That, that is completely separate. Um, if you talk to the sport coach about an issue that you can't resolve, that's one thing. And the next step would be come to me and we, we can include everyone in the room that there is an issue about. But, but I ask that, that play time, uh, play calling, those things don't need to be commented on um, from outside parties. And once again, you can access these policies at our handbook online at Pembroke K-12. Moving forward here to some MIAA rules. These are mandatory uh, rules that I have to cover with, with everyone in this meeting. And this is the MIAA rule 62. It's about our chemical health violation. I'm going to read this in full so it's clear. From the earliest fall, um, so this should be winter practice date, the inclusion of the academic year or final athletic event, whichever is latest, a student shall not, regardless of quantity of use, consume, possess, buy, sell, or give away any beverage containing alcohol, any tobacco product, marijuana, steroids, or any controlled substance. It is not a violation for a student to be in possession of a legally defined drug specifically prescribed for the student's own use by his or her doctor. If you violate this policy, the first offense comes with 25% contest suspension. For example, if, there, if there's 12 hockey games this year, you have one offense, you lose four games. And that's something that um, nobody wants to be a part of. So please understand this rule and clear. If there's a second offense, it's 60% contest suspension. And if you violate this MIAA rule 62, you are ineligible to be elected or serve as a captain for one full calendar year from the date of violation. So that's an important rule that we all understand. Uh, the next one is, that's extremely important, this is rule 45, the bona fide team member rule. This is uh, a bona fide member of the school team is a student who is constantly present for and actively participates in all high school team sessions. Bona fide members of the school team are precluded from missing a high school practice or competition in order to participate in a non-school athletic activity event not recognized uh, by the MIAA. So really what this means, if, if you take part in a club team, an AAU team, a travel team, something that's not affiliated with your high school team, and you choose to partake in that event over your high school event, then you become a violation of this bona fide team member rule. And that if you violate this, um, you're ineligible for the next two contests or two weeks, whichever is greater, immediately upon confirmation of this violation. So once again, if you commit to playing a high school sport, you are expected to be a part of every meeting, practice, game, and team event that goes on. Some things we have to talk about, of course, is our athlete COVID protocols. Um, and this big three here is, is, is as dry and as simple as it gets. I think we all know this at this point, that socially distancing, face covering, and sanitization are the big three that we can't waver from in anything that we do. Locker room access. This is simply to use the bathroom or to, to quickly change. The locker rooms will not be a place to, to hang out, to gather. We always got to kind of try to limit those clusters of people. Um, so if you, if you do need to use a locker room, I ask that the coaches will monitor this for us and you just get in, get out, do what you need to do. Some of the practice modifications, uh, masks in Pembroke are the only acceptable face coverings. So even though the MIAA allows gators to be worn, the town of Pembroke, has, uh, those are not permissible to wear in athletics. So the only face coverings that are acceptable are masks. I, I ask that you, you abide by those rules. During practice, um, the huddles that you partake in need to maintain social distancing. 
eliminating handshakes at benches besides hockey, no shared athletic equipment. If you bring any water bottles, towels, things of that nature, understand that that's for your own personal use only. It should not be shared with any teammates, coaches, or anyone else that's a part of the team. The next piece here is our spectator policy. Um, not too different if you're familiar with our, with our fall time, but there are, there are slight changes here based on the sports that, are, that will be happening. Starting with swimming and gymnastics, no spectators at this point in time will be allowed, and that is, that is mainly due to, to the logistics of the facilities. So, of course, none of those facilities were, were designed for socially distant spectators and or people participating in those meets. It, it's just too tight in those, and, and the restrictions in that really don't allow us to have spectators at this point in time. Basketball. Parents and or guardians and siblings will be permitted um, for any events in the Patriot League at this point in time, there'll be home only fans, no away fans. So if we have a game in situate, we cannot have any fans in situate. They will not allow any Pembroke people to go there. Same thing if situate comes to Pembroke, we will not allow any situate fans here at Pembroke. So home, home only fans, excuse me. And we're going to go back to our lanyard based system, uh, which we did in the fall. Each student athlete will receive a lanyard uh, and they'll, they will give this to parents and or guardians who they want to attend those games. And I ask that you bring these lanyards to our events so we can allow you in the venue for that game. Ice hockey, these will adhere to rink policies. Of course, we don't know in the Hobbamock Arena, which is our home arena. So we will abide by their policies. With that being said, we expect all rinks to abide by the EEA guidelines. One of those guidelines is a 40% capacity. If we see a rink, for, for example, that is not following those rules and it's just allowing to, to fill up the venue, We'll remove ourselves from that, that venue and we will no longer use it. So it's ring policies, but attached to that are our EEA guidelines. And once again, landings will be required for admittance to get into those arenas. So in some, for, for our spectators, there's no away spectators. The Pembroke lanyard is required for access. Per that lanyard, you get two people plus your siblings for the lanyard. Siblings, if they come with parents, um, they must remain sitting with their parents during the entire contest. Uh, and an additional piece here, because the spectator piece is challenging that I understand, we're going to try to partner up with PAC TV, which is our local uh, community television channel, to get some live stream going on, mainly for our basketball games, because those are the indoor events that, that we house here in, in the high school. Um, so we're working on improving our relationship with them and being able to live stream the game. So those who can't be, be in attendance, they can watch from home with any kind of live stream computer Wi-Fi advice. Lastly here is communication. Um, these are some of the best ways to follow Pembroke Athletics and what we have going on. Once again, I've referred to our website quite a few times here. Uh, I would say our, our major platform for immediate information is our Twitter page. That's at PHS underscore Titans. Uh, we try to keep that as active and updated as, as we can. Um, so that, that would be a good resource for you to, to check in on. My email if there's any questions at any point in time, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Also, my office number. I want to I want to make sure you guys feel like I'm accessible to you. Um, I, I would love to get to know uh, our parents of the winter sports student athletes. That, that's an important piece for me. So I want to be accessible. I'm looking forward to meeting all you guys. This is the email and the office number that you can contact me at, at any point in time. Following this meeting, um, I believe coach um, coaches from both our girls and boys basketball team. Uh, have set up some team meetings to meet. Unfortunately, normally we do this in the high school, have breakout rooms and go that way. Of course, we're virtual right now, so they're going to they're gonna break out in some virtual rooms. If, you're, if you participate in gymnastics and or swimming, uh, the gymnastics will be next Tuesday at 7 p.m. and swimming will be tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. I believe your coaches have all reached out to provide you links and or dates to join these team meetings. So at this point in time, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to open it on up to see if we have any questions.